Good morning, Hope. Good morning, Good morning everybody. Hey, praise God, amen. amen. Praise God, praise God. Hey, uh, let's, let's, uh, let me just encourage you real quick in Psalms 150. It says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. For those who are joining us from the uh, website of Facebook and YouTube, we welcome you. Thank you for being here. Let's pray, shall we? If you can stand up, please do. Let's just give God our focus and everything this morning. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord God. Thank you that you are worthy of our praises. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us, Lord God, to take away our sins, Lord, so that we may have inherited eternal life in you. Father, thank you for the grace for the mercy and the faithfulness that you continue to bestow each and every one of us, Lord God. Father, may you open the gates of heaven today, Lord God, and hear our praises, Lord, because we invite you in and you inhabit, Lord God. You live in our praises, and we love doing that for you. <laughs> so, Lord, thank you again for today. Pray for everything that's happening. We love you so much. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in the mighty name of your Son, and Lord and Savior, Jesus. We pray, and all God's people say, Amen. 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 All right. Let's worship God. Yes, Lord. I believe you gave sight to the blind. I believe that the dead came to life. I believe that there are wonders and signs. You're still the same. I believe every word that you said. I believe there were scars in your hands. That your goodness is good without end. You'll never change. I will tell of your wonders, sing of your grace. The God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Always. Your mercy is mighty, age after age. All generations will bow down and praise. your presence I know there is power power to save I will tell of your wonders sing of your grace the God of creation knows me by name the Lord is faithful yesterday now and always always your mercy is mighty age after all generations will bow down and praise the Lord is faithful yesterday now and always always you are you are you are you always will be God you were you were you are you are you always will Yes, you always will. Come on. Sing your word. The God of creation knows me by name. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Always. Your mercy is mighty, age after age. All generations bow down and praise. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Always.
to shout your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, uh, oh. Church, Psalm 22.3, it says, God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. So when we gather on Sundays to give God praise and worship, he is right with us. God is always with us anyway, right? There's something supernaturally special happens that is indescribable. Knowing God is near and with us, amen. He sees our struggles, our happiness, our dark days, our sorrows, our sadness, our loneliness. He's close to us when we give him praise. The hardest thing is, for me anyway, when things are not going right, I don't want to give God praise. I want to just push him aside and say, Lord, I want to do my thing. It's because of our sinful flesh that is fighting against the very core of our DNA, of our natural spirit saying that I want to give God praise. So this morning, let's shout his name. Amen. Let's give him praise because he is worthy of all our praises. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Come, let's sing that again. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Let's sing it again. Nothing compares to the promise. Nothing, oh Lord, nothing. Nothing compares to the promise I Nothing compares to the promise Each one of us has been given a promise. By the Lord, some of these promises are very specific to you. There are things you've been holding on to your heart. You say, I, this is the only promise I got, Lord. And I love how when it comes to provision in Malachi, it says, test me. The Lord says, test me in this. It was a promise. It said, test me in the promises. I said it, I'm going to make it happen. But see, our worldly thinking, the way our world is and the way we are in our flesh, is we want to give up right before the breakthrough. Don't do that. You hold on to the promises so hard and so tightly. You know, like a bulldog that doesn't give up and clenches its jaw and it's not let go. You have that kind of dogged kind of faith to believe in the promises. Say, Jesus, this is what you said. He said, I will give you everlasting life. He says, I come to give you life more abundantly. When the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life. And that much more abundantly. And when people see your lives and see what I've done through you, then you can tell others about the wonderful cross that you've experienced. As we enter into this time of worship, in communion we celebrate but it's also a solemn and sober reminder that we are in need of a savior we need Jesus so as we're taking this communion take it on your own time we have another worship song I want you to remember the promises that God gave to you hold on to them and be thankful <laughs> of this is that Jesus died for you. He shed his blood for you, his broken body for you, and that he's coming back again. He is coming back. And that is a great hope that we have in Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time that we have, knowing that nothing compares to the promises that you gave. For the promises of you are yes and amen. And so we thank you, Lord, for those that are struggling, that are watching us online, that are here, that are struggling in their faith, like myself. That you would solidify and give us the strength that we need to hold on to what you've already done and what you've already promised. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name, nothing compares.
gates of heaven, you step down to earth, innocent perfection, you gave your life for us and we are amazed, we stand in awe, for we have been changed by the power of the cross, how great, how great, how great.
Thank you, glorious Father, that you would give us such spiritual wisdom and insight that we could grow in the knowledge of you. Thank you, Lord, for flooding our hearts with light so that we can understand this this confident hope that you have given to us, that you have you have called us your holy people, and we're we are rich in this glorious inheritance that we could actually understand this incredible greatness of, of your power that you left for us to believe in you, that this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and, and seated him in the place of higher honor at your right hand in the heavenly realms. And now you are far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only, not only in this world, but the world to come, that you, God, have put all things under the authority of Christ and you made him head over all things for the benefit of your called out children, the church that's your body, that you have made full and complete by Christ, who fills everything, who fills all things, everywhere with himself. So Lord, we thank you, God, for this incredible grace that when we believed, we received it. Not so that we could boast, but so that we could be your masterpiece that the world would know and the world would see. pouring out your love and your spirit to make all things good which has been your promise and your design from long ago all glory to you Jesus all honor to you Jesus all majesty all wisdom all praise all our love to you sweet Jesus in your precious name we pray and all God's children said amen Amen. Praise God, everybody. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hey, let's give the worship team, you know, just let's give them our appreciation and our thanks. You know, glory to God, but thank you. Thank you for the time, the dedication. Um, Karen, thank you for pouring out your heart in that song. It was awesome. So, good morning, Hope. How are y'all doing? Good. How are y'all doing out there in Webland? chat away, say hi to Crystal who's manning the, manning the system out there. Forgive our little sound glitches here and there. We, we figure them out as we go along. So uh, thank you all for being with us. Uh, if you're visiting with us today, thanks for being here. Uh, a real key thing for not only visitors but for all of us is this little card that's in our program. Um, the reason this is so important is this allows us as a family of God, as a community, to, to connect with God in prayer throughout the week. And so I, I want to ask you to, to go ahead and, and just write your name and write out how we can pray for you, write out what's going on with your families. And, and I have a, a, a real specific request this week, and that is if, you know, especially for those of us that would call hope our family, I would ask that you, if you could write down the name of somebody that you encouraged last week. Somebody that God put in your path, and maybe, you know, maybe they're a part of the family of God. Maybe they're part of the church. Maybe they're, maybe they're your neighbor. Maybe they're a cousin or an auntie or an uncle or a friend or a coworker. But, but somebody that is in your life that you somehow gave God's love and God's spirit to. And, you know, that, we, we talk about that here at this congregation often, like, you know, this is what we want God to do is overflow through us and, and give out his love. But it, it's important that we don't just kind of, like, ignore it as sort of one and done and, and, and just, it's, so, it's just like an occurrence, like, you know, I went to go pick up my mail out of the mailbox every day. 
It's important that we join with heaven of what's going on. And it is a family of God with what's going on. So I, I really am imploring you, and I know, you know a few of you are writing them down. Thank you for doing that. If you're online with us, you know, just give us a chat. Tell us the name of somebody that, that you encountered, somebody that we can pray for. Because God put them in your path for a reason. And, and God's spirit is on us for a reason. And that prayer we just had is, you know, God's glory is inside of us to be poured out and to be light to the world. And so, you know, we, we want to be able to be engaging with him on an ongoing basis for what the Holy Spirit can do through people. Amen. So please, 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 please let us know. And, and to be quite candid with you, the, the, the level of the God spirit moving through us to other people, that's in, in many ways, that's the pure measure of the effectiveness of any congregation or the body of Christ. It's not how many people are here on a Sunday. It's not how much money we gather or how many buildings we have or cash. or It's how many souls we're impacting. What's the spiritual splash that we're making? I, 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 not to go too far and deep on it, but I like telling the story of when I was in college and went to this, this party with a bunch of football players and and uh, wrestlers and baseball players. And I've got this really very, very close friend. His name's Ralph. And, and, and Ralph's kind of a small guy. Um, he's not petite by any means, but he's certainly smaller than the, than the tackles and the guards and the linemen on the football team. And we're at this pool party that was at this guy's house who was a lineman on the football team. And we were doing cannonballs, right? And, and you, as you can imagine, you know, the football players, they're making these big old huge splashes because these are big guys. But then Ralph jumps in, and he's a swimmer. And Ralph, is, Ralph has been like near pools. He grew up in pools. And, 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 and Ralph knew how to do a jackknife cannonball and create a big splash. And he's a little guy. And all the football players were sitting around on, on the deck of the, of the pool, and they were kind of lounging around with their towels on, on the side. And Ralph jumps in from the diving board, and he jumps in, and he makes this huge splash that he soaks all these guys. And I'll never forget that because it does remind me, you know, Ralph was the smallest guy, but he made the biggest splash. Amen. Amen. And, and so I am imploring you, in essence, I'm honestly begging you, please, let's write down the names of people that we're contacting and, and God's putting in our life and pray for them so that we can watch this splash get bigger and bigger. Amen? Amen. Amen. So thank you. Yeah, praise God. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. So that being all said... We want to, I want to continue on in our, in our study about devotion. We're, we're talking about how God's people can be devoted. And, and last week, uh, Nick Burton had a great word about, about being devoted to God and, and letting that devotion just pour out through other people. And we're going to explore that in a little deeper way today. And, and what's key to all of God's spirit being able to pour out through you is, is simply to try. Just, just, just try it. And so to start out a little bit today, I want to start out with a little try humor. I got some dad jokes, so you guys can groan or moan or throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you can, you can, you, yes, yes. You can throw things at me if you like. These have been filtered by uh, a member of my family, so um, you know I'm not, I can't blame that person for how bad these might be. But anyway, just to, just to let it rip. Here, talking about try, uh, where can you try to find a cow with no legs? wherever you left it. All right, why would you want to try to become a baker? Because they make lots of dough. All right. Remember as a teen, you would try growing facial hair? Well, I used to hate beards and mustaches, but then it grew on me. Wow. I was trying to expand my... It took a while, huh? Okay, all right. I was trying to expand my knowledge. I finally got around to watching that documentary on clocks. It was about time. All right, here's the last one. You guys aren't enjoying these too much. Aren't you? All right, last one. What's the easiest way to try and burn 1,000 calories? Just leave the pizza in the oven. All right, all right. Okay, so there's, there's our moan and groan humor. But we're gonna, we are going to get into, we're going to try to get into God's word here and have his spirit, you know, really come out and, 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 and touch us. And, and honestly, my prayer, uh, my prayer every week isn't just that 
you know, this wouldn't just be head knowledge. It wouldn't just be information. Um, I, my prayer is not that even just that the information would be helpful to our lives. Um, I, I truly do have a sincere prayer that this gets into our hearts and transforms us and changes us and, and doesn't just inspire us, but that God's word exposes us. It's good word. Yep. That, that as, as we connect here with what God has said, that, that we will be exposed, that we will be, in essence, kind of, you know, naked before God to know who we really are and who he has promised us to be and to understand the difference so that we can be transformed by him through his spirit. So that's my prayer. Just pray with me, if you will. Lord, uh, I recognize what I just declared. That's an impossible task. It's nothing I can do. It's only what you can do. And so, Lord, for these people that I love and, and the people that are watching, that you love us all more and even deeper, Lord, I, I, I do pray that you would shine your light on our hearts so that we can see the beauty of what you call us to be and the beauty of how you are inside of us wanting to burst out, to bloom out, to radiate out, to shine out. So God, uh, help us with this and help me with this impossible task, Lord, that only your spirit can achieve. And, and you be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's children said. Amen. 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 So we are going to go into this, this word about devotion and being devoted to, to the fellowship today. And, and the word, uh, the inspiration for devotion comes from the book of Acts in Acts chapter 2. And if you go ahead and, and turn to Acts chapter 2 and, and simply read this with me. And you can ha have it on the screen as well. But I ask you to read it as well in the Word, not just on the screen. I know on the screen is convenient. I also know that, you know, if you're online, it, you know, it, it's also convenient. But there's a reason why I'm imploring you and asking you to look at the Word, the actual written Word, is one, you can, it helps you learn it. Uh, it it's a different method of learning. It, it's tactile. It's, it's kinesthetic because you're holding it and you're looking at it. And, and they've actually done studies where if people will open up their Bible and read it, they're more apt. There's like a 96% more uh, chance that they'll actually remember it. And if you can remember, if you can get in your mind, it can change your heart and it can change your behavior. So again, let me encourage you. So in Acts chapter 2, it says these words, All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, and to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. Now, that's just a real simple sentence, but the depth of that comes really in, in, this, in this verb, devoted. They, they, they were devoted. They were devoting themselves to this. And, and, and I've talked about this before, but it, it, it warrants bringing it up again. The word devoted in the original language was, was this word. It, it's pros or pro scatero. So, so proscatero is, is a compound word, and it means to or towards or going to something. And then the, what it's going to is the other part of the compound word of enduring strength. So when we say we're devoted to something, we are saying that we are moving towards this enduring, everlasting, never-changing strength. Devotion is just more than just kind of spending a little bit of time with something that might be valuable to us, that may be very dear to us, but we, 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 but we only casually go there, yeah. or we only randomly go there, or we only occasionally go there. To be devoted means there's this pursuit, there, there's this, this intensity of chasing after it. Uh, Rick Warren made this great, uh, Pastor Rick Warren, Saddleback uh, Church down in uh, Southern California, I made mean, this great analogy about our faith. 
that sometimes we look at our faith as being a piece of the pie of our life. Like, you know, I've got my relationships, may have my marriage, may have my studies at school, may have my work. Those are all pieces of the pie. I can have my body, you know, my, my health. And those are all pieces of the pie. And then sometimes I look at my spiritual life as being a piece of the pie, meaning, okay, I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll, I'll come to church or maybe I'll watch online or, and I, I've crossed off the list, there's that piece. Or, or maybe I go a little farther and I, and I may be in a study or maybe reading the Bible now and then and I, and I can cross off my list. I had that piece. But that's not what faith is. That's not what our life is. It, 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 our life with Christ, our devotion, is that our life is God is the pie. He is the whole thing. And, and, and our life is to be pursuing that and, and engaging with that. And so we, we see that, you know, this is what devotion means. And, and um, we've been looking at the different aspects of that. And today I want to look at what the word says in Acts that the original followers, this is after Jesus rose, after he left them and said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And he left them with the Holy Spirit, and, and Peter was just, just overwhelmed and, and, and just sort of like tsunami drenched with the Spirit. And the Spirit came into their lives and was, was living inside of them as God had promised. And, and he's pouring out, and Peter tells the followers and the crowd, hey, you've got to get baptized, you, you've got to receive God's Holy Spirit. And they do, and they turn to devotion. They turn towards enduring strength. And one of the things that they were devoted to was one another, the fellowship. It it says very clearly they were devoted to the fellowship. Now, that that original word fellowship in in Greek, it means it's koinonia. And that what that means is we kind of get the little bit of the word common out of that. But koinonia literally means shared in common. So they were devoted to what they shared in common with each other. It was a partnership. It was community. As we see in, in, in a synonymous metaphor in, in the Bible, God uses the word family often to describe what it's like to be a Christian. In essence, there's no such thing as an isolated Christian. Amen. And, and, if you're in, and if you're in that place of isolation, if you're in that place of loneliness, and, I, and hey, we all went through like two years of isolation. I think we all get it, what it can feel like. But if we're in that place of loneliness, then we're missing out of the heart of God in the fullness of the pie, in the devotion of what he wants to, us to pursue, and that is pursuing him in the body and in the family of God. And so we see this aspect of, 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 just, of, of a oneness, of a heart that is for each other and with each other. And that one that encourages one another and strengthens one another and speaks life into one another and prophesies over each other, letting the Holy Spirit give us words of information and knowledge and wisdom and vision that just moves our spirit and keeps us in that devotion to God. And so the fellowship is very, very key. And today I want to take a look at how this played out for them in a a deep way. And so if you turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 6, just flip to Acts chapter 6, and we see this depth of koinonia for the followers. And and, and here's the scene in Acts chapter 6. And and, and just so you know, it's the, you know this book called Acts, it's, it's some of the acts of some of the apostles with the action of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, it's called Acts because that's just kind of you know, a short way of saying all that. But it, it, it's, it's not even the fullness of what the Holy Spirit did after Jesus poured himself out to the followers. It's not all the apostles either because some of them... Uh, some of them went to other parts of, 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 of the continent. Some of them went to India. Some of them went to Egypt. This is just some of these guys that are hanging out mainly around you know, Turkey and, and Greece and Rome and Israel and Syria. It, it's just a piece of that. And, and so these guys are trying to live out this devotion. They're trying to live out this spirit of God. And in Acts chapter 6, 
you know, the, the scene is that they, they've got a problem. It wasn't a perfect it wasn't a perfect church. It wasn't a perfect group living this out. They've got, they've got a problem that they're trying to figure out. And so in Acts chapter 6, we see what the problem is. It says, But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the distribution of food. Now, let's just stop for a minute here. So their fellowship was pretty cool in that, you know, you came to the family of God and they took care of each other's needs. You know, they, they fed one another. But what we see here is brutal racism. I mean, let's be real about this. You know, what we see here is that they were, you know, the Jewish people were being racist against the Gentiles. And maybe we need to take our minds for a second and kind of rewind back to ancient times and ancient cultures. Part of the survival of a culture was staying pure. Part of the survival yeah. of a culture was, was you know, prioritizing your own culture group yeah, yeah. And, and looking at the fact that you know, there were a lot of wars and battles between different culture groups over time. So it's easy to understand that they're being raised in, in a context of... Uh, not just isolation, but elitism, or in a context of don't mix and match. Yeah. But God's love is so powerful that he destroys that and treats everyone as children of God. And so what we see here is, is this problem that has existed that these two racial groups are, in essence, not including one another in the love. It's bigotry. Yeah. It, 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 it's, as I say, it's, it's, brutally, it's bu brutally racist. And, and, but God's love breaks down the barriers of race. It breaks down the barriers of economic status. It breaks down the barriers of, of culture group. It breaks down the barriers of lifestyle. It breaks down the even breaks down the barriers of what your religion is, because if you have a different religion than Christianity, God's not threatened by that. And to be quite challenging to us as Christians, sometimes we are and we act in a racist manner. But that's not how God wants us to respond. The the, the essential character of God, the essential essence of our faith, is love. I mean, when Jesus was confronted by the Pharisees and they were trying to trip him up by saying, look, we got all these commandments. He told us which one's the most important. Knowing that's a trick question. How, you know, how are you going to make this hierarchy of, of you know, what, what's better to, you know, in, in all the rules and all the laws? <laughs> and, and Jesus and only God's wisdom could do. He just basically says, you know what? They're all floored together by love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. I mean, love. He told his followers, that they're going to know you are my followers by your love. Make love your greatest goal is what Paul said to the church later on. It's love. That, that love pours out through all people. And so when we see this problem that they had, it's a problem in, how they, in their devotion to one another. It's a serious challenge to be able to love with that greatness. And so, you know, if we're, if we're going to be devoted to Christ, that means we're going to be devoted to all people. And a, and, a, and a serious challenge for us sometimes, I think, in our culture right here and right now, and I, and I kind of speak into us a little bit, maybe not people that are following Christ. And, you know, a blessing that I have in, our, in this congregation is that we have hue of skin. And that, you know, we, I think there's a maturity amongst most of us anyway. Uh, most people I talk to, there's a maturity amongst all of us. Know that we're, we're all raised with different culture groups. And, and I, you know, we don't necessarily have the same experience of, of, of what, how that formed you but we know that God's love's in you and we celebrate how you were formed. Amen. You know, we, we celebrate those cultural, racial distinctions because there's differences. 
I don't know what it's like to be, you know, to grow up a black person in the South. I don't expect everyone to know what it's like to grow up being a, a, a white boy in the middle of a cornfield. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's, there, it's just how God put us on this planet and what he's, what he's put us through. But we have a love of him, and we can love each other, and we can celebrate all that. Amen. And so I honestly don't know if we're all that challenged with that. But I think the exposure of, of, of this word, though, isn't just maybe upon race, but it might be upon, it might be upon our beliefs, our political beliefs, perhaps. Or deep, deep, deep down, it could be upon... Do we have love for those that have hurt us? Yep. Have we forgiven those who have wounded us? And I know that's not necessarily a racial thing, but it's out of that principle of God's love and devotion to the fellowship that they're God's children too. And, and, and I know that's a hard thing to do because it's painful, but I know God's love and his spirit is there to, to help us with anything he calls us to do. And he, he says to us clearly, and he's talking about prayer in Matthew chapter 6, that, you know what, if you haven't forgiven somebody, then uh, just hold your prayers to the side for a second because we, we need to deal with your heart and what's going on for, with you and that other person. And so maybe if that's you, I just offer to you that God's love is great and he can help you grow and forgive. And of course, there's a difference between forgiving and forgetting. And of course, there's a difference between forgiving somebody and being in relationship with them if they don't have the capacity to love you as Christ loves you. But let's, let's, let's be exposed here by God and his word and be honest with ourselves about how he wants us to be devoted to the family of God and all of God's children are. So we, we don't get to pick and choose. We, we, we have that challenge to, to love everyone. And, and so going on here in this, in, in this challenge and this problem that they got, so you know they've got this food distribution thing going on, and there's some racism. And, and so the 12, um, so the 12 call, meaning the disciples, original followers there, and, and, the, and the guy that they added to the, to the group, call after, after Judas betrayed him and, and was killed. So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers, they said, well, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God and, and not running the food program. And, and so, brothers, select seven men who are well-respected. Say well-respected. Well-respected. Full of the Spirit. Say full of the Spirit. Full of the Spirit. And wisdom. Say wisdom. 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 We'll give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea, and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Say that with me. Full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Philip, Procurius, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. And, and these seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread, and the member of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. Wow. <laughs> these are the same priests that were you know, earlier pers wow. persecuting people. But they were, they were converted because now the, the Spirit of God is truly flowing, flowing through them. And, and I want you to note here that, you know, there were criteria that they had for selecting these guys. You know, it was their reputation. It wasn't their pedigree. It was, uh, it was the, whether they were full of the Holy Spirit or not. It wasn't how, whether they've run a food program or not in the past. It wasn't based on their experience. It was whether they had wisdom about God. It, it wasn't, again, based on, on their, uh, their, their resume or, or their interview or their hard skills. It wasn't based on their clothes or how much money they had or how long they'd been around or their economic status or any of that. It was based upon that aspect of can they be trusted are they full of God and his spirit? Do they know God? And then when you look at the distinction of Stephen, who, who's specifically mentioned here, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and later on, as, as you read on here, you know, Stephen ends up being so strong that he gets stoned for what he believes. And, and it's, he's martyred, and, and he's martyred in this, honestly, this miraculous way that just has my mind boggled on how the Holy Spirit can drag, not drag, but can be with us as we're being dragged through anything. And so they mention Stephen, and, and note those two things, that he is full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, let's talk about full for just a second. How do you know if something is full? Just to, just to demonstrate it, I'm going to get it perhaps a little messy here, but just to demonstrate it, you know, obviously this... If this, if this picture represents the Holy Spirit, let's say, God, and, and this little cup represents us or Stephen, it, you know, obviously if I, I pour it up to a little bit of, uh, and I've got a measurement here of uh, just a bunch more, that's not full, right? We know that's not full. It's pretty high, you know, it's maybe more than somebody's got only a little bit in there. But then, you know, I can, I can pour in a little bit more almost up to the top, and the question is, is it full there? The answer is no, there, there's still a little bit room. The only way we know it's full is when it starts to overflow, when it can't take in anymore. Then something's full. And so the same thing is true with the Holy Spirit and us and God. We don't know if we're full of the Spirit until it's flowing out of us, until it's pouring out onto somebody else, getting somebody else wet, if you will. So here's Stephen, right? Here, here's Stephen, full of faith and full of wisdom. And, and the word about faith, it, you know, it's this Greek word pistoios. And, and, and what, what, that, what that simply means is, is it's where we get the word persuaded. It's where we get the word trust. It's where we, where we understand faith is understanding being confident. And the author of Hebrews said in Hebrews 11 that, you know, faith, faith is the insurance of something we're hoping for. We, we, we don't see it now. We don't know about it, but we're, we're hoping for it. Maybe it was a promise, a promise from God that, that he made, and, and we don't have evidence of it. A lot of things can go wrong. There, there, there's probably more evidence about it not happening than there is. But faith is the assurance and the knowledge and, in essence, the overflow of God's spirit to, to know that it's going to happen. The confidence of something that hasn't happened yet. That's faith. That's faith. And, and, and to be full of the Holy Spirit, how do we know if someone's full of the Holy Spirit? Well, we just look at what the fruit of the Holy Spirit is. Paul wrote to the church in Galatia. He said, the fruit of the Spirit is, many times we, we memorize this verse. This is a great verse to memorize if you haven't memorized it. Fruit of the Spirit is love. What's that first word? Love. The first priority, love. The key of, of, of the relationship with God, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We know if you, you know if your pitcher is full or your cup is full of that if it's flowing over. If you're helping other people with self-control, when you see somebody else kind of you know go you know they, they let their emotions go out and 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 and, and they're, they're going to something that's not of God and, and you recognize oh man that's that's out of bounds. I can help them come back in. You know, not condemn them, but just, you know, love them, encourage them. Uh, to, to be full of love, to be able to have it pour out to other people, and, and not just people that are comfortable, people that aren't comfortable. People that, you, you, you know, you wouldn't want to touch, you wouldn't want to be around. You know, I, I'm, I'm just so in awe and, and respect of, of many of you, led by Regina, who go and feed the homeless twice a month, and you did so even in, during the pandemic at you know, the risk of going into a population that probably doesn't have, you know. Amen. I mean, that's true love. I mean, homeless people are probably the closest thing we have in our culture to lepers. Yeah. We drive by them in Safeway, and they're standing out there because we're not sure if they're pulling a scam or not. I know that a lot, you know. 
but just to be able to go to that homeless shelter twice a month and pour out that love, it's, that's incredible. And we see it pouring out through, these, uh, through the other fruit that's here as well. Joy, to be, joy is not happiness. Joy is, is knowing that yeah, I, I'm loved by God even though I'm in muck, even though I'm in, even though, yeah, it, even, I, even, even, even when someone has died in my life and I'm really hurting, even when God said no to a prayer that I cried out for years and years or months and months, he said no, but I still have joy that he loves me. And there's a fulfillment that I don't see. Patience, boy, don't pray for that. <laughs> That's an old Christian adage. Don't pray for patience. God is going to make you wait. <laughs> but we need Sorry, it. Lord, we need it. He's patient with us. And if we've got that Holy Spirit in us, we, we can be patient with anybody. Patience when they're sinning. Patience when they're hurting us. Patience when, they're, they're not, when I'm not getting my way and they're in the way. You know, patience for somebody. Kindness, to be kind in those same situations, same scenarios when it's not working for us. It's easier to lash out. You know, it's that adage, hurt people, hurt people. Um, you know, to know that, oh, God is kind, and however I was hurt, I can forgive, and if I can let that go, then it's easier to now be full of his spirit to let that pour out to somebody else that might be trying to hurt me even now. faithfulness. Let's talk about that for a second because it says in the word that Stephen was full of faithfulness. Full of faithfulness. Full of that anticipation of what he hadn't seen. Great, a great definition of the word faithful, of the word faith, is a three-letter word. T-R-Y. Try. Try. To be moving in God's spirit, even though there might not be evidence about it, even though you've never done it before, even though it's uncomfortable, even though you don't have the words or, or you, you know, you're, you're uncertain of the situation. Paul, Paul said to the church in Rome in chapter 12 pretty clearly, he goes, try it. He goes, try this. Read, read, read this list with me. Go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 12. A little extra credit. In Romans chapter 12. Romans right after the book of Acts. I, mean, I remember that. It's just that's kind of where Paul went after he acted out in all those stories in Acts. So in Acts chapter 12, verse 6, it says, In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to, and now he's going to go through this list, the implication is if he's given you some ability, try it. Have faith in it. Have faith that God will be there in it. Have faith that it's him and not you. So try prophecy. Try that gift. Try speaking out with as much faith as God has given you. See if God has given that to you. If your gift is serving others, try serving them. Boy, you know, again, kudos to, to Mary Fields and how she leads us in serving people in this congregation, in this family of God. Amen? Yeah. Anybody not been touched by Mary Fields? Yeah. She'll tell you it's not her, it's, it's the Lord. She's just trying her faith. If, if you're a teacher, teach well. You know, we celebrate, you know, it's, it's rightly so. We celebrate people who exercise their gifts here in the family of God, in the koinonia. But, you know, praise God for the teachers out there in the world. The, yeah. If you're in the school district system and yeah. you are a teacher, yeah. praise yeah. God for what you're doing right. and exercising right. that gift. Making a huge, life-changing impact right. on another person is incredible. Uh, by the way, just a little side note, we're going we're gonna to celebrate back to school coming up on April 21st. We're asking all the families with kids to come back and, and let's be here together. Let's you know, have, have some fun with some bounce houses and, and, and we'll have some hot dogs, a little barbecue, and we'll, we're going to have some ice cream. Or not, I said April, didn't I? I said, yeah, you, thanks for that look. Thanks for, thanks for bringing your mask down and giving me that. I eat, what? what the, 
August 21st, there is an A and a 2 and a 1, and somehow it just got twisted. That's all. August 21st, we're going to celebrate back to school, and, and, uh, and we want to give a little love offering to, to the Green Valley Middle School. Uh, and, and so it's just a gesture of, of thanks and appreciation. Uh, but teachers are awesome, and, and, and we need to celebrate people that exercise these gifts out into the world. I mean, I asked earlier, give us the name of somebody that you spoke to this week. Maybe God's prophecy you know, hit you, and, and you're able to speak some life into somebody. To, you know, a simple prophecy to somebody is that God loves you, and he has a plan for you. That's his, that's his spiritual truth. That's a, that's a speaking of wisdom. That's a speaking into the future for somebody. And the, because the word of the world is that he, you aren't loved and your life is worthless. Yeah. And so to speak that into somebody's life, that's prophetic. So, you know, try it. Be acting in faith with it. Don't just, you know, uh, let's be moving with God's spirit. If your gift to is encourage others, encourage them. If it's giving generously, give. If it's leadership, then lead. And, and by all means, if you're in some work position of authority or a school leadership position, you know, God is, is, is there on you. And people are watching you. And you can use that gift to leading people closer to God. Just by listening to those that you, you know, to what the lives are of the people you lead, care for them. Be a, be a leader that leads by caring for your people, not just trying to get a task done. And, and then, if your gift is uh, showing kindness, uh, mercy in many translations, then 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 do it gladly. Uh, nurses, man, doctors, uh, policemen, firemen. Those are people engaging in that mercy gift because they're, they're looking at those lives as more important as themselves at those moments. They're taking risks of their own lives, especially, you know, honestly, especially nurses during all this pandemic stuff. You know, we're, 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 what they're doing and, and the environment they're in, bless you, bless you. A couple of nurses that we know of, so... Just, again, just, just try. Just try. Moving in faith. Know that the Holy Spirit's pouring out through us so we can serve the ones that are called out that we have in common with, that we have this common love with the koinonia. So uh, here's how I want to close today. I want to I say a prayer over us, uh, a, a prayer of, of his power and his spirit moving through us in faith. And I don't want to be campy by any means, but I want to be sincere and I want to be real. And, and, and so if, if you want to have a blessing of his spirit pouring out through you for the area of giftedness that you have, I'm, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you can't stand, that's fine. Raise your hand. And if you're watching online, I'm going to ask you to text something to us. Just that I, I, I need prayer for fill in the blank, whatever that might be. Because um, God wants the fullness of his spirit getting everybody soaked. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if, if you're looking for that prayer, go ahead and, and stand. And I'm just going to stand here and raise my hands up and pray over you. Again, just be sincere about it. You know, I think first I want to pray for anybody who's not, anybody who wants Jesus and his Holy Spirit but hasn't received them yet. <laughs> you want to be standing, but you know you need Jesus. I just want to give you the opportunity to say a prayer that opens your heart to receive him. So just join with me, and we can all say this together because we can all open our hearts up if we want to. So go ahead and repeat this simple prayer with me. Thank you, God, for giving us Jesus who gave us your Holy Spirit. I surrender my heart and my life 
to you, Jesus, that you are my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your love and your spirit and pour out to the world. And then for those of us that are standing asking God by this stand that you would pour out through the gifts that we have, just I want to say this blessing over you. For a praise to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your Holy Spirit. And thank you for giving us your word that can expose the parts of our heart that want to engage with you in the fullness of you pouring out to the world. Lord, bless us with your anointing. Your word says you're everywhere. Your word says you'll never leave us, and yet we close our hearts off to you. So as we stand, we're opening ourselves up to you, Lord that you would pour out into these areas that we engage in our life. Pour out, Lord, to all of us to be able to speak out faith, to be able to speak out truth. Pour out, Lord, that we can serve other people as better than ourselves. Pour out your wisdom so that we can teach well. Pour out your courage from us to be able to put it into other people, to encourage them. Thank you for pouring out your generosity, your money that can be poured out to other people so we can give to those that have need. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out leadership to us, that we can help us as a body follow you and pour out, Lord, your mercy to each and every one of us, that as we see those that are hurting, we would have your heart and how you hurt, and to be able to give that tenderness and compassion to them. So thank you, Lord, for your trueness of your gifts and your faith. Thank you, Lord, that the world awaits your spirit pouring out through us. We're honored that you would call us to it. We're honored to be your koinonia, your community, your fellowship. In Jesus' precious name we pray and all God's children said, amen, amen. Praise God, everybody. Give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a promise. Thank you for being with us. So we're going we're gonna to close out. We'll let the worship team give us a song to in, engage with God's spirit again. And, uh, you know, let me encourage you again. Just keep track of who God's putting in your path this week and, and, and let him pour out to you. And keep track of those names. And, you know, go ahead and text us during the week or get on our website and fill out a prayer request. I just encountered or I just had a conversation with or I just met or I just prayed for somebody. So we can keep that in prayer. That's that's what we want to see is God's movement through us. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's say a prayer, Lord. Thank you, God, for all you give us. Thanks for this opportunity to give to you. Yes. The end of our service, Lord, we, we, we love to give out of our finances that you gave to us and, and acknowledge that you own everything. It helps keep our hearts in tick and, and keep us out of stress and strain and worry and, and, and just knowing that you provide for all our needs. So thank you, God, for loving us and pouring out through us. And may your gospel pour out through the world for the, through these monies that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, amen. 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 Have a great week, everybody.
tower of refuge and strength let every breath hold as i am and that this is the world 